Nihao YouTube, what's going on? Zalan to China. I was traveling to Qingdao in summer and today I want to show you the top 10 things you absolutely have to do when you're traveling to Qingdao. Qingdao is located in the east of China and it literally translated means Green Island. Uh, Qingdao is located in the province of Shandong, uh, which means uh, eastern mountains so we are in the far east of China almost in Korea you can easily reach Qingdao from Beijing by plane or by train the train takes around five hours and is approximately 250 quai. now Qingdao people are amazing and very very nice they are always friendly and very, very helpful. They eat amazing breakfasts most of the time together with the family. They drive fat German cars. They eat pizza in an ice cream cone. Yes, in an ice cream cone. They have amazing seafood, eat fried dick on a stick. They drink one of the best beers in the world, even out of a plastic bag. And, ladies and gentlemen, the street cleaner plays a melody. Now, let's have a look at the top 10 things you absolutely have to do while visiting Qingdao. No spoilers included. If you want to have more detailed information about the stuff you can do in Qingdao, check out my other videos. For now, enjoy the top 10 things to do in Qingdao. Have fun! Number 10 Zhongshan Lu Zhongshan Lu is something like the heart of Qingdao. Uh, from this street, you can reach almost all the interesting points in Qingdao. Now, let's have a look at the map of Qingdao. Uh, Zhongshan Lu is located in the southwest of Qingdao. Now, what makes this place so special? First, you can uh, reach many, many famous places uh, starting from this street. Uh, second, uh, the train station is very, very close. Third, there are many, many buses going from this street and number four there are many many hostels in this street or near this street so this is basically the first thing you should have a look at when you arrive in Qingdao try to get a hostel next to this place and you're perfectly fine and in the end of this road you will find one of the most famous places to be in Qingdao Former German Governor's House in Qingdao Qingdao was occupied by the Germans between 1891 and 1914 and in this museum we can see uh, the former German 
governor's residence. And basically what you can see at this place is some uh, typical archi German architecture, uh, some German furniture, um, some really typical uh, German stuff, which uh, basically for me as a German is not really interesting, but I can imagine um, for other people or especially Chinese people, it might be very interesting. Uh, the architecture is really nice. It looks like a castle. Um, it's rated uh, an AAA uh, place to visit, a tourist place. And um, I think it's quite nice to see it. But um, as a German, mm, for me, it's a bit boring. But um, if you are there, um, go for it. It's not very expensive. I think uh, around 10 quai. Have a look at it and you will have a nice view as well. If you are there, don't miss to visit this German pub here called Ratskeller. This is a really, really typical German pub. I can confirm this. They offer some really authentic German food. Pretty expensive though. If you like German stuff, at least try the sausages. Number 8 the Jimualu Shizhang. If you have been to Beijing before and you like the silk market, you will love this place. You will love the Jimualu market. Uh, you can buy all kinds of knockoff stuff, uh, everything Chinese people like, all the Gucci stuff, fake Gucci, fake Prada, fake Louis Vuitton, all this stuff, all this knockoff stuff really 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 cheap much much cheaper than in Beijing and the silk market and um, I don't have to add anything about the quality you know what I'm talking about uh, I was visiting this place and um, to be honest I think it appears a bit to be run down uh, I saw on wiki travel it was uh, recommended uh, being soon, soon one of uh, Qingdao's most popular retail markets. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. The place made a really rundown impression on me, a bit crappy. Um, look at the pictures. If you like shopping, cheap stuff, go for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't go there again. If you go there, check out the good foods, the good traditional foods in the streets. And uh, also look out for some good Korean restaurants. It's kind of the Korean quarter of Qingdao. One more thing to mention, once you visit the market, don't forget to haggle. Haggle like hell, don't accept their prices. You can bargain a lot. In my opinion, the best place to go for shopping in Qingdao concerning bags and clothes and stuff is the Taidong Buxingjie. This is a street in Qingdao with really, really nice markets, a lot of small sellers uh, putting up their clothes and stuff. And you can, again, bargain and haggle. And it's so nice if you walk there in summer. It's pretty crowded, but I think it's a lot of fun. Don't miss this place, definitely go there, it's a really really nice street, check it out, you can buy a lot of nice stuff and the atmosphere is really really nice. Make sure you go there in the evening, it's starting when it's getting dark. Number 7 The Qingdao Underwater World it is said to be the first aquarium in China. Now the Qingdao Underwater World is divided into five different stations you can walk through. Uh, you can see seals, um, other sea animals and stuff. And you will definitely take some nice videos and some nice pictures. I've been to some sea worlds before in Germany and in other countries. And I can really say this SeaWorld is definitely worth it. It's worth going 
there are so many interesting animals, you will take a lot of nice pictures and a lot of nice videos. It is definitely worth going there. But you might ask, why only place number 7? Well, it's a, quite a bit expensive. If you want to do all the five different uh, stations in the aquarium, which I really recommend, it's 130 kwai, which is a bit expensive in my opinion, even though it's worth it. But, ladies and gentlemen, oh my god. This place is so crowded. I mean, it's it's really, it's so crowded. I've been there on a Monday, on a regular Monday, a regular working day, and it was so crowded. I, I, I could hardly see the seals. I, I couldn't even see the seals or anything. It was so crowded. Everyone is taking pictures like crazy, and you don't even see the animals. Everyone is just taking the camera and trying to take pictures from something he cannot see and the windows are so dirty and it's so crowded like really okay it was nice but I will never ever go there again. Do this at your own risk. Number 6 The German Architecture Qingdao was occupied by the Germans between 1891 and 1914, so you can still find a lot of typical German buildings and typical Baroque style German architecture. If you have a closer look to some of the buildings, then you will find out they definitely do not look Chinese. There are various German buildings in Qingdao which are very special. For example, uh, the former German governor's house, which we've seen before, or even uh, the former German prison, which is quite interesting too. But I think the most Interesting and authentic German architecture are the two churches. One of them is the Catholic Church, the other one is a Protestant Church, and the clock tower and the bell of the Protestant Church were even imported and shipped from Germany. Also, if you have a closer look around the place, you will find German stuff everywhere. Xiao Qingdao. Literally translated, it just means little Qingdao or just little green island. Um, it's a very nice island in the middle of the sea and there is a white lighthouse on the island. You can almost see it from everywhere uh, on the beaches. It's very, very nice. You can have a walk around on the island. The island is quite nice. Uh, it's like a it's like a big park. You can have a walk around. You have some nice coast places, and you can have a look at the city of Qingdao. The white lighthouse was built by the Germans, and you cannot access it. It's closed. There are a lot of really funny translations around the island. Discover it on your own. Now you have two ways to access small Qingdao. The first way is to take the ferry. It's a really short uh, ride. And the second way is to have a walk over the dam. The dam was built by the Japanese. Uh, both ways are a bit inconvenient. Um, the ferry takes a lot of waiting and when I was there the place was so crowded and there was a lot of queuing and stuff. So we decided to uh, take the dam. Uh, once you take the dam you have to be really careful because there are taxis and tourist buses driving on the dam to the lighthouse and it takes a bit longer than it appears. 
Starting from Zhongshanlu, it might take around two hours by foot to get there. Number four, the Wu Si Guangchang. This is a very nice place located directly next to the coast of Qingdao. Wu uh, Si Guangchang literally translated means five four place, and this is dedicated to the May 4th movement in China, which was an anti-imperialist and political movement growing out of student demonstrations against the Chinese government, uh, which was allowing uh, Japanese people to receive territories in Shandong province. Make sure you visit this place at night. The scenery is just amazing. I mean, look at those pictures. It is located in the business district of Qingdao and next to Qingdao government. The pictures you can take there in the evening are just amazing. You can go there by bus and you can go back by taxi at night. Make sure you have a look around at the whole bay uh, and the Olympic scenery next to this place. It's really, really nice and make sure you have a taxi to come back it might be difficult to get a taxi. You can order taxis with a, with a mobile phone app or online. Number three. The Xiaoyu Shan Temple. There are many temples in Qingdao and the Xiaoyu Shan Temple is my favorite temple in Qingdao. It means Little Fish Mountain Temple and before you access this temple, you have to climb a small mountain. Uh, you pay some entrance fee and you enter a really, really nice park. You climb up some nice stairs. Everything looks really beautiful, nice trees, nice parks. And um, once you reach the temple, you can go inside. The temple has three floors and you will have an amazing view over Qingdao I'm sure you and take some sea. food and drinks with you. You can sit down, relax, and enjoy the view for a long time. Number two. The Qingdao coast. Now, all of the Qingdao coast is really impressive. There are very, very crowded beaches. There are really, really nice beaches. And there are at least six different beaches in Qingdao. So the beaches are nice in the evening, they are nice during the day for uh, having a sunbath, going to the sea, going swimming, just having a break, relax. And they are really nice in the evening for having a long walk, see the sunset, um, have some nice coconut juice, have some really nice ice cream. Don't forget to have the excellent seafood in Qingdao. This is really a must when you are at the beaches, take the seafood with you, especially the really famous Koyu, the Qingdao octopus. Qingdao people like to exercise along the beaches during night. You can, everywhere you can take excellent pictures along the beaches. Have a walk there in the evening, this is a must. Plan at least two or three days just for the coast and the beaches in Qingdao. Maybe one or two during the daytime, one or two nighttime and evening. The beaches in Qingdao are a must and they are amazing. Now, I think every one of you has been waiting for this. Once you go down uh, Zhongshanlu, you will reach this most famous place to be in Qingdao, the Zhanqiao Pier with its beautiful Qingdao Pavilion. Now, what makes this place so special? Well, it's the logo of the Qingdao beer and it is the symbol of the city of Qingdao on its own. If you want to have more details about the beaches, check out my other video about beaches in Qingdao. Number one. And the number one place absolutely not to miss in Qingdao is the Qingdao Brewery. 
The Qingdao Brewery is connected to the Qingdao Beer Museum and if you buy the ticket you can take a tour through uh, all the different stations of the Qingdao Beer Museum and the Qingdao Brewery. You learn a lot about um, brewing history, about the Qingdao beer history, uh, how it was treated before, uh, how it was, how it is made, how it was made. You can see some old German engines, motors. You can try freshly unfiltered beer all the time. It's so, so fascinating. I am a German guy. I have been to a lot of breweries, but this brewery was a big surprise. I recommend to get the VIP ticket for 160 kwai. It's it sounds like a lot of money, but it's completely worth it. You get a private tour through the museum and the brewery, a lady who explains you everything about the history in English or in Chinese. You can try a lot of unfiltered beer and in the end, you can try and drink as much as Qingdao Pijiu as you want, fresh from the tab, with original Nuremberger Bratwurst. Oh my god, they were, that was so good, that was so good, I just got so drunk. Don't do this in the morning, or if you do it in the morning, plan nothing for the rest of the day. The Qingdao Beer Museum is absolutely the number one thing you should do in Qingdao. Get the VIP ticket and enjoy. It is so, so cool.